Hello, today I will be breaking down my song Sunset Drive Vibe, which sounds a little bit like this. Walking down the runway, high heels button, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive Vibe, got that Sunset Drive Vibe. I'm gonna break it down from top to bottom. Um, it's not gonna be a very long or high production quality video, but I hope you get something out of it. So I wanna start with the drums. Uh, there's no better place to start than the drums. So uh, let's start with the snare here, since it's the, the furthest thing up. The snare is two different snares uh, layered on top of each other, both sounds which I got from a service called Splice. The snare, uh, one of the snares sounds like this, and the other is a clap. So together they sound like that. Pretty simple, uh, but I find that layering snares often adds some thickness and some warmth to uh, the snares. I usually do one deeper snare and one higher pitch thing like a clap. Um, up next, this is a pretty messy project, so I apologize. Let's find the kick. Here we are. This is the kick for the track. Also taking, also taken from uh, from Splice. So the kick and snare together sound like this. Easy, easy so far, right? Cool. So let's talk about uh, percussion and hi-hats. So here I have a percussion loop that I, basically everything, all the loops in this project are from a service called Splice that I use, highly recommended. Um, so here's another percussion loop from Splice. People passing by. Um, here's a, another uh, hi-hat loop. And each one of these things has, you know, a few different tweaks to it to make it pop out or, you know, lay back in the mix. Um, like this one, for example, has a cut in the high mid frequencies and by the EQ right there. And this one has a compressor on it to make it stand out. Very gentle, um, you know, arrangement techniques, but I think it, it makes all the difference when you start layering more and more elements together. So we have percussion, we have snare, and we have kick. So this is what they all sound like together. And that's essentially it. I mean, we have tambourine, hi-hat, kick, clap, snare, and that's that's basically it for the drums. Um, there are there are other rhythmic elements, but they aren't found in the drums. So uh, I have a little sticky note here. Let's go next to the vocals, shall we? I'm just going down the sticky note. So the vocals for the song, um, pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, there's two vocal tracks. There's one normal and then uh, in normal range, and then there's one that's pitched up an octave to sound like, um, you know, like a mouse voice. So this is what the vocals sound like isolated. Walking down the runway, high heels stunting, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive vibe, got that Sunset Drive vibe. Pretty simple. Um, so let's let's uh, isolate the uh, the lower one first. Walking down the runway, high heels stunting, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. Um, I want to break down the processing on this. So if you if you don't find this interesting, uh, just you know go to a different timestamp or so um, that I'll have in the description. So uh, let's let's check out the processing though. So first we have a noise gate. What this does is it basically cuts off all the excess noise below 37 decibels. Um, it cut it it um, it cuts all the noise out basically. Um, and I have a, a 99 dollar Blue Yeti microphone, so it picks up a lot of background noise like my ceiling fan. I don't I don't have an acoustically treated room, so it's a big big help. Next up, we have an EQ. Uh, on this EQ, you can see that I've essentially uh, got rid of all the frequencies below 100 hertz, which gets rid of any unnecessary rumble that won't um, be needed in, in the vocals. Um, I have a little bit of a, a damp in here on uh, right where my voice sets. The natural tone of my voice sits around this range right here, and I like to uh, bring that down just a bit so it's not so boomy, uh, especially with this microphone, it tends to get boomy. Um, let me turn the EQ off and uh, listen how it sounds. In fact, I'll turn all the other plugins off and just leave the EQ in the noise gate. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. So this is without the EQ. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. So I got rid of some of that boominess. I boosted the uh, one to two kilohertz range. And what this does is it gives some presence to your vocal in the mix. Um, it'll really make the vocal pop. And then right here, I have um, some dampening on the sibilants of the S's and T's and uh, F's and stuff like that. And that helps control that frequency range. So that's that's the first thing I do, or the second thing I do. The next thing I do is I apply a de which gets rid of those those syllabuses that I was just talking about. This is what this sounds like. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting, people passing by cause they owe me nothing. So you can see on the on the S's, like stunting, um, you can see that the reduction uh, you know reduces it about three decibels. 
which is great. So that, that helps control that also. Um, after cleaning up the vocal a little bit, I then compress it. I use a, a, a two compressors mainly. So here's the first compressor. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. And what you might notice is that this is a very aggressive compressor. It takes the sound and it grabs it and it, it, it fits it to the compressor, if that makes any sense. You know, it molds it. it there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's very aggressive. Um, you'll see this, this um, meter move and it's reducing about five to 10 decibels, which is pretty aggressive. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. And so what that does is it flattens out the dynamics of the vocal it takes the, the the quiet parts and it makes them louder and makes the loud parts and makes them quieter so it's more uniform and easier to work with next up oh i want one other thing to note about this is uh is the attack and release times uh this is this uh, type of compressor in logic is known for being an extremely quick compressor which is why it makes it so aggressive so the moment it hears a very loud sound it brings it down and ducks it um, so aggressive with a fast tack and a release. Then the next compressor is a little bit more gentle. Here we, you can see uh, the release is a little bit longer. Um, and if you watch the meter on this or the graph of the reduction, you'll see what I'm talking about. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive 5. Got that Sunset Drive 5. So what this is doing is it's basically grabbing the beginning of, um, of the, the, the phrases after the silence like walking down the runway, high heel stunting, people passing by. It's taking those things and it's ducking them um, just so it's not as harsh. And then you can, you can see the, the gain reduction stays pretty constant um, after that. So it's, it's based off of um, the difference between the silence and the phrase, if that makes sense. Um, so just a more gentle compressor uh, that captures those, those kinds of things. Then I put a, a, a plugin called Fat FX, which is available in the latest version of Logic. Um, the thing I do with this one is I, I add distortion. So this is what the distortion sounds like. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. You might also notice that there's a uh, some kind of a limiting plug in here. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't I didn't tinker with that too much. Um, so yeah, it adds a little bit of distortion. Let me show you what this sounds like when I pull it up. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive 5. Got that Sunset Drive 5. So it gives a little bit of brightness. Here's without. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive 5. Got that Sunset Drive 5. It adds a little bit of brightness and a little bit of bite to the vocal, which is very helpful in helping, you know, helping it stand out. Um, Let's see. Fourth to last thing I have here is a graphic EQ, which does nothing but simply boost the uh, 16 kilohertz range and the, the frequencies just around it, which gives a lot of air to the vocals. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. One more time. This is without it. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. Here's with it. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing. It might be a little bit difficult to hear, but uh, the uh, the uh, s like the um, the air frequencies basically are just being boosted. The s and the h. it's all being boosted just a little bit. That gives it some presence and some freshness. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. The uh, grittiness in my voice is being brought up too. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Next up, we have an ozone imager. This is a free plugin. Last time you up, uh, no. yeah, it, it gives me that message all the time. I don't I don't mind it. Here it goes. Okay, so Ozone Imager is a free plugin that basically adds some stereo width width to the uh, the vocal that I'm working with. Since it's in mono, I wanted to add some width to it, and this is what the Ozone Imager does. Check it out. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. Sunset Drive 5. Got that Sunset Drive 5. So what you'll hear is it takes the vocal and it pans it. If you're wearing headphones, you can definitely tell. It pans it around and it makes it sound like it's in a space. So I do just a little bit of that to make it uh, not so dry and mono like this. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. Very, very minor. These are all very, very minor adjustments, adjustments but they, they make a big difference. Um, second to last thing is a stereo delay. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. And what you hear is the, uh, the, the vocal being panned right and panned left um, at about a quarter note and an eighth note rate, very, very low in the mix. Um, but it adds a little bit more space. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. You can hear it most notably when I stop the, when I stop the song. Um, and then the very last thing is Space Designer, a reverb plugin with a, a plate of, um, reverb setting on it. And this is what that sounds like. Walking down the wrong way, high heels stunting. People passing by because they owe me nothing. And that gives space and room to breathe for the vocal. Um, and yeah, that's that's the uh, the vocal change for that. Whew. 
quite a lot going on there. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. So the uh, it's basically the same thing for this this other vocal here. We have the uh, high pitched up version. Walking down the runway, high heels, and people passing by because they don't mean nothing. Two notable things about this vocal is one that it's side chained to the kick. Uh, one of these compressors. Not sure which one. Oh, it's probably the one at the very end. This this compressor right here um, is side chained to audio four, which is the kick drum. And what that means is is it'll duck the the vocal whenever the kick drum hits. Walking down the runway, high heels, and people passing by because they don't. Without. Walking down the runway, high heels, and people passing by because they don't mean nothing. Add some bounciness to the track. The other thing is uh, what's called a sample delay is on here. So sample delay, what it does is it duplicates the sound, shifts it off by a little bit of a time frame, and pans it hard left and right. Hard left and right. I used to do this manually till I found this plugin. Uh, it's a great plugin. If you're wearing headphones, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Walking down the runway, high heels, and people passing by because they don't mean nothing. Sunset drive. And what that does is it gives some stereo width for the vocal to sit in, the main vocal to sit right in the middle, and then the uh, ancillary vocals to sit on the side. All right, so that's the vocal chain. Walking down the runway, high heels stunting, people passing by because they owe me nothing. Very nice, huh? Uh, and on, the, on both vocal chains, I have some more EQing, getting rid of that sibilance, which was a big problem for me. Um, I'm, I'm working on getting better at that. And uh, a few more compressors. Walking down the runway, high heel stunting. You know, just uh, another fast one and another soft one. All right, I said I said I've been done with vocals for a while, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move on now for real. Um, next to last thing would probably be the arrangement of the song. Um, you might notice that the song is actually pretty short, um, and yeah, it consists of a chorus, a verse, a pre-chorus, and two more choruses and then the uh, outro and the intro too. So it's a, it's a pretty short song. I made this song honestly with the intent of it um, grabbing people's attention, especially on platforms like TikTok and stuff like that. Um, I love the song dearly, but um, you know, in terms of arrangement, that's what I was going for. I really wanted it to pop. So I, I did that. I did just that short intro, um, short outro, get straight to the chorus, and then uh, you know, give two of the choruses at the end to show it's really, make its, make its point heard, you know, give the last hook. Um, yeah, so uh, let's look at some of the elements that are taking out, taken out during the verse. Uh, some things are notable, uh, like this guitar that I didn't touch on um, in the chorus. People passing by because they only this. That very subtle detail is no longer in the verse, but it does come up in the pre-chorus. Take some time to see what's going on. Another notable uh, part that comes back in the pre-chorus is the hi-hat, which isn't present in the verse. Palm trees by my head. Take some time to look around. It adds some more energy to it. Um, yeah, that's 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 what gives uh, these different sections their their own feel. Um, and then the chorus. Uh, one thing that the neither of these sections have, but the chorus has, is this percussion loop that I mentioned earlier. So this tambourine is very, um, it comes from, you know, decades of doing music where the chorus has a tambourine in it. It's, there's something about it that just brings it to life. And so that's what I did in this song. I kept the tambourine in the choruses, but out of the verses, outro and intro. Um, okay, so we're, all, we're, we're, doing, we're doing well. I want to talk about some of these effects that lend it, themselves to the arrangement. Um, one of them being, or a couple of them being like these sweeps that sound like this. I'm sorry, that wasn't a sweep, that was a fill. Uh, I have a bass fill, or like a bass um, slide, if you will, that I got from Splice. A drum fill, as well as the corresponding crash. That was made in Logic. Here's a sweep. Sounds good. And yeah, that's, that's uh, the transition elements that basically come in um, whenever there's a transition between um, you know, between sections. So here's another one. Here's that fill. Bah, bah. I apologize for that. That was incredibly loud. Drive, yeah, something like this. Bah. So that fill just adds a little bit more, you know, momentum going into the next section, and it all comes back again for the next choruses. Um. What's next? Let's talk about these ad libs in the verse. So these are essentially the same vocal processing chain with no reverb or very little reverb and delay. 
Um, it's it's more intended to be right up in your face, real dry, real cut cut clean, and um, the course is meant to be a little bit more spacey. So I did the same processing chain essentially, and just got rid of the stereo um, delay and space designer reverb plugin. These ad libs are with a megaphone EQ uh, pattern. I wonder if I can find it. Maybe not. There's a uh, an EQ pattern on these that that emulates a megaphone. It cuts out all the high, cuts out all the low, and just uh, makes it sound like a megaphone. Okay. I totally misspoke. That that doesn't exist. That's why I couldn't find it. Five. Okay. So this is just um, stereo or or panned hard left and right with the sample delay plugin that I was talking about earlier. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh huh. Yeah. The uh, the ad libs I was referring to with a megaphone vocal are right here i believe taking what i need and i'm giving what i get same thing stereo um sample delay excuse me with this megaphone eq on it taking what i need and i'm giving what i get i don't need a little more i don't need a little less i don't want to need it i just want to be the best uh you know how it goes um and then one more thing i didn't point out earlier i'm pretty bad at this youtube thing if you can't tell I appreciate your patience. <laughs> uh, you might notice that this vocal is very chopped up. There's very, it's very um, segmented. And I did this manually. Um, I did even more syllabins work to take down the S's and the T's. I literally go into the waveform, chop out the S's, the T's, the F's, and what sort, and just and turn them down because otherwise it'll it'll be a chaos for my vocals. <laughs> so uh, that's what that's that's what you see when you see that kind of stuff. All right, so that covers the arrangement of the song. Um, this right here is pr pr pretty obvious. It's uh, I made the beat, I exported it, and then I did a, a what's called a warp, like a uh, a speed up warp in Logic that sounds like this. So it just speeds the beat up until it's all the way you know at tempo and at pitch. So that's the arrangement. All right. Uh, final thing I want to talk about is the core, the core things behind the song, and you guessed it, it's a sample from Splice. It's a sample from Splice. So this is a sample that I got from a company called Soul Surplus, which is highly recommended, which sounds like this. Man, it's just so good. Um, I, pro I won't play the whole thing because uh, I'll probably get, you know, copyrighted or something. Um, so there's two of them, which is interesting. So there's that sample, which is just drag and drop, you know, made the beat for it and, and just vibe with the sample. But there's also this one. And what this is, is it's uh, the sample obviously pitched up. It's an octave up. So it matches the same pitch as this one. But it's in a higher frequency range. And you can see in the EQ, I boosted the mids because that's what I wanted to stick out, really. I really wanted to fill up that mids so I can get, uh, so I can cover all areas of the frequency spectrum. And then I put Space Designer on it, the reverb plugin again, to give it some ambience. And as you can see by this meter over here, both of these are being side chained very hard by this compressor to the kick, which gives it that feel. It's just just great. Just great. Um, let's see. Here's another percussion element that I didn't touch on. Interesting. I didn't even know I had that in there. Pretty interesting. Another percussion thing. And then this white noise is another another great thing that's involved um, to make it to make it f full and sound you know f rich. It's very very quiet and very low in the mix, but it gives it some air and some breath, um, and some breathing room to the mix. It's also side chain to the kick. And then. Yeah, I think that's basically it. The, gu the guitars, uh, I covered this earlier, these things. And then, oh, one last thing here. Uh, the Retro Synth. This is a Retro Synth plugin that I use in Logic. This fills out the low mids of, of this song. This is something I played in Logic um, on the Retro Synth plugin, hard compressed to the kick or sidechain to the kick, and that fills that low middle region. Okay. 
Okay, so speaking of okay, <laughs> uh, like the ad lib that right there. Um, I think that's it for the song. So I hope you uh, you enjoyed this, and I hope you got something out of it. Um, thanks for sticking with me, and uh, you can go find the song on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you stream stream music, and you can listen to it. And I hope this this little breakdown will give you you know a whole nother uh, whole nother viewpoint and perspective on the song that I made. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>